Hey, what's good, y'all? It's C. Will, and this is the Passive Income Network. On this podcast, we talk about creating assets that produce passive income. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment and say what's good. On this episode, we have Simon Ray, a best-selling author, founder of Tao Trading. So Simon Ray has worked as a professional in the financial market since 1992 when he started his career as a futures broker. He loves studying uh, the markets, trading the markets, and he loves traders too. During his 28-year career, Simon worked at Goldman Sachs where he founded and headed up the markets desk in Sydney. He subsequently held senior positions at Citibank in Singapore. Uh, During this time, he developed a considerable expertise in financial markets with a particular emphasis on stocks and options. Let's bring Simon to the show. Hey, Sue Will. Great to meet you. Yes, great to meet you. How How is it going? Hey, I'm really well. It's uh, it's bright and early here in Singapore and uh, looking forward to an awesome day. Oh, excellent. Well, this will be a great start to the day. So let's, let's sure. get to it. Uh, again, I uh, want to give yourself an introduction uh, to the audience. And uh, we know you're in Singapore, but I'll let you tell them again as well. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm, I'm based in Singapore. I, I, I moved here in 2010, met a Singaporean girl, and that, that's why I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I like that. And yeah. I'd, um, so as you said, I, I spent, you know, the better part of my career in the, in, the, in the corporate world working for global investment banks. And I, you know, I got to a point in my life where I just thought, you know, what, what am I doing? You know, I'm, I'm basically helping people who are already incredibly wealthy kind of stay that way and, and maybe get a bit wealthier. And I, I just felt, you know, a bit, bit hollow and a bit empty, a bit of a midlife crisis, I guess. And I thought, well, look, I've, I've developed a really good skill set here. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is put that skill set to use, helping people who could really benefit from it. Yep. So I, I left, the, left the corporate world behind and uh, in 2017. And since then, I've been really, I guess, teaching people how to take control of their financial future themselves by you know, shattering many long-held myths that have been created and uh, perpetuated by Wall Street. Oh yes, Wall Street, Wall Street. Yes, um, let's dive a little bit more into this. Like, and I'm um, thank you because that was my question. Like, why did you leave? You just answered that uh, in my mind. I was thinking, I was, I wonder why. Um, so, can we can we talk about? So, you worked at Citibank and uh, Goldman Sachs. That's right. Yeah. So, can you describe a little bit what it is like to work at a big global institution like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of pressure. You know, they they they, they employ high performers. So it's, yep. it's a competitive environment. Uh, they, they pay you well if you perform, but yeah, boy, they expect their pound of flesh too. Uh, <laughs> and you, you kind of, you're always looking over your shoulder, you know, you, you always, you, you never feel that comfortable in your seat. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very stimulating because uh, you, you, you're surrounded by smart people who are passionate yep. and you, you just, I mean, every day is such a great learning opportunity. Um, but you know, it's, it's high pressure and stressful as well. Okay. So when, so in, uh, Singapore, right. Um, so when you got out to Singapore and you were, uh, heading up a division, like, so were you like, uh, the founder, I th- I've read something about like, you started a new division out there and then you kind of, oh, that, was, uh, that was at Goldman actually. In, oh, Goldman, in okay. Yeah. I, I founded and headed up the markets desk in 2005. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we, we were responsible for all of the, um, fixed income, credit, foreign exchange, and structured derivative transactions for the group. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, so the reason why I'm so curious about Citibank, so I, uh, I'm an Algorand blockchain ambassador, so I'm in the crypto space, and they just hired a few people from Citibank that are, uh, I believe, I'm like from Ireland and uh, things ah. of that nature. Yeah, and I'm noticing more of these, uh, like I said, hedge funds and big institutions are jumping into different blockchain applications and being VCs and, um, you know, like I said, running higher up positions, right? Uh, my question is like, what, what is your, are you into crypto and do you like pay attention to the crypto markets in terms of like, I guess, globally? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I'm into crypto in a small way. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a true believer, but, but I would label myself as intensely curious. Okay. Um, I, 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 I think it'd be irresponsible to not pay attention to the space. I, I don't think, I don't think any, any of us should ignore it. Yep. Um, 
but it, it's you know the crypto world right now it, it kind of reminds me of the internet back in 1999 2000 like we, we all knew it was going to be big we just didn't quite know how and, and who, who the you know who the winners were going to be and you know there, there were a lot of obviously early failures there but there were some amazing tremendous successes as well for sure i could see the same thing happening with crypto okay so let's move to trading your, your expertise okay uh so can you define trading in the markets because i'm always usually talking about passive income on my channel long-term investing i slightly dabble in trading can you break down what type of trading are you talking about so when i talk about trading uh, trading to me is buying an asset with the thought that you'll be able to sell that asset at a higher price some point in the future yep simple as that now Given that that's my definition of trading, most people who call themselves investors really would fit that definition as well. Yes. To me, yeah. an investor is somebody who doesn't really care about the stock price, that they're not monitoring it daily, weekly, or probably even monthly, that they're, they're, they have got a good understanding of a business and they want to be a, an owner of that business for the long term mm -hmm. and share in the, the dividends and the cash flow that that business spins off. Uh, if you're somebody who checks your portfolio daily or weekly, if you're somebody who's worried about what the Fed's going to say, if you're somebody who's concerned about GDP announcements, to, to me, you're a trader because you, you're concerned about asset prices. And, and I think that represents the vast majority of people. Um, the thing is, though, if, if you're going to trade, you need to have really you know, rock solid watertight risk management. You said Policy. risk management. Risk management. Yeah, risk management is, is the key to this game because that, that's what keeps you in the game for the long term. And if you've got an edge, and an edge is just something that puts the probabilities in your favor, uh -huh. with good risk management, you, you almost can't help but win over the long term. It, it, it may, take, may take some time to get there, um, but, but the odds are very much in your favor. Excellent. Okay. Well, what kind of trading? Uh, I know you said stocks and options. So for my audience, let, let's let's keep this one uh, like real simple. Can you kind of yeah. define what options trading is for them? Absolutely. So I, I specialize in, in options trading. Now, um, what is an option? If you picture picture two guys at a barbecue. Sorry for the you know the sexist reference there, but uh, <laughs> <You're good. laughs> so the t two guys at a barbecue. One guy says to the other, you know, you've got you've got a hundred shares there worth. $50. Well, I've got a hundred shares worth $50. So if you, if you pay me $5 today, I'll let you buy these shares off me for $50 at any time over the next month. Okay. The other guy says, well, hang on, what, what if the shares go to hundred dollars? That's okay. You can still buy them off me at $50. A deal's a deal. Okay. Well, okay. That sounds pretty good. Well, well, hang on. What, what if the shares drop? What if they drop to $25? I said, well, that $5 you gave me is now worthless, but you've lost a lot less money than if you bought the shares at $50 off me on day one. And that's, kind of, that's how a call option works. It, it gives you the option to buy stock at a future price. Yep. Oh, sorry, buy stock at a set price anytime from today up until the future. And if the share price rises, you can stand to make uh, often almost as much money as if you'd bought the underlying shares. But if the share price falls, all you lose is that small fraction of the share price that you paid in, in option premium up front. So the, the beauty of options is that they offer unlimited upside and limited downside. And some people say, oh, wait, hang on, that, that can't be right. That sounds too good to be true. But, but this sort of trading even has a name. It's, it's called asymmetric trading. I don't be put off by the word asymmetric. It might remind you of, I don't know, triangles or something from your yeah, high school. <laughs> Uh, asymmetric just means not symmetrical. It just means, you know, one side looks different from the other. And in the case of, of an option, your, your upside looks very different from your downside because your downside is limited and your upside is theoretically unlimited. Okay. What, what about puts? I know if you are, you know, selling a put, you can then have unlimited losses as well, if I'm correct. You are spot on, Sue Will. And I, I don't recommend people sell puts. Um, not unless they really know what they're doing and they're trading with a very big account. But you, you can buy puts. And buying a put is a bit like buying an insurance policy. Yep. Um, you, 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 you get paid out if, if something bad happens. You know, you, you pay a small amount of insurance premium on your house. And if your house burns down, you, you get the money, right? And that's obviously the, 
that something bad happening. In the case of the stock market, you buy a put option, you pay, again, premiums like insurance premium. And if something bad happens, i.e. there's a stock market crash, or, or even if the price of that stock just falls, uh, you, you get paid out. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I, I've dabbled in some, you know, calls and a little bit of puts there. So I'm still learning, so I might have to tap in with, with your education or something in the future. Um, Sounds awesome. Yeah, so in terms of, like, I'll say this, why options over, like, swing trading or you, you know, used to do futures. Do you still trade futures? Like, why is options your favorite? Well, the reason I like options is they offer leverage, all right? Mm -hmm. so, as do futures, but I'll get to the difference in a minute. Now, leverage just means the ability to make large gains from a small amount of capital. So it's not uncommon at all to make gains on an options trade of 50%, 100% or more in the matter of, you know, a few days to a couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, my average holding period would be two to three days to two to three weeks. Two to three days uh, to three weeks. Okay. Yeah, that, that would be my, my average sort of holding period. Now, futures can offer you that same sort of leverage as well. But the thing is with futures, it's on both sides. So if, if, you, if you get it wrong, you're exposed to big losses. Whereas again, with options, because all you've paid is that option premium, which right. limits the amount of downside risk. Uh, you've got the upside leverage without the downside leverage. So that, that's why I've really focused on and, and specialized in options. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, you brought up risk management. So that is an easier way for you to manage risk, I would say, in options? Very much so, yeah. Nice, okay. okay. Well, options, I mean, sometimes they get a bad rap, but, but options are the finance industry's most popular and most flexible risk management tool. Okay. Well, my I'm definitely going to dive in deeper. I, those options always, you know, get me a little little nervous. So I was like, you know, studying. I, I do like sh I use some platforms that do like uh, I collateralize shorts with crypto and collateralize a uh, crowd <laughs> jumbling my words, but longs. Right. But options is something that I I sampled with some um, recently with like some uh, was it a wheat options, right? Uh, when the markets is going crazy. So i have doing that. I've done. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done that, the, the kind of dabble, but, uh, my interest is always peaked because again, you know, creating a second income is what you're talking about. Um, and that's something I'm always looking to do as well. Um, can we, can we talk about the Tao of trading? Why Tao of trading and this whole concept okay. of Tao? Sure. So, in addition to being a trader, I, I'm also a Jeet Kune Do instructor. So I've, I've been involved in martial arts, you know, since I was 10 years old. And so Bruce Lee is a, is a, I guess, a mentor to me. He's, he's a guy yeah. I, I respect him greatly. And obviously he's, he was the inventor of, of Jeet Kune Do. And he wrote a book that I found life-changing called The Tao of Jeet Kune Do. Oh, let me write so that. The, tit the, the title of my book, The Tao of Trading, it's, a, it's a, I guess, a, a tribute to the Tower of Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee's great book. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you break down some uh, things that are in this book that were, I guess, some highlights? Because you, you have Absolutely. to be talking about psychology a lot in there if you're talking about trading. I know that's a lot. A, yeah. It's, it's, it's something important. I really focus on. Um, and and it's, it's part of the, the Tower, the way of trading is, is understanding your own psychology. Um, yeah, you, you've got to have some technical skills. You, you've got to know what a what a call option is, what a put option is, what a moving average is, but um, all of that stuff's fairly easy to learn. It's it's the self mastery that uh, I mean that that's that's a lifetime's work. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 really and truly, I, I'm hoping that my book um, gets people on that track, gets them interested in it. Um, that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of books out there that have been written on options trading. Mm -hmm. So you you might wonder, well, you know, did, did, why does the world need another one? Um, I, I've read a bunch of those books and I can tell you from firsthand experience that they're all, they all tend to be quite boring, quite dull, and, and also quite, quite difficult. Yeah. You know, there's complex math and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, you know what, the, the world needs a book that is both engaging and simple. Yep. And, and the number of people who've said, you know, man, I, I read your book in a, in a weekend, I couldn't put it down. It was so easy to read. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've succeeded in, in that goal. Oh, that's and, power. Uh, yeah. I guess some, some of the highlights from the book, uh, I talk about the, the five big myths of Wall Street and, and sort of break them down. 
Uh, I talk a lot about trading psychology. A, a, a sort of an introduction to that is in the, the chapter, why, why trading is like sex. Um, I, I give away. Like sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an odd comparison, but uh, it, it'll make sense uh, by the end of chapter three. Uh, I give people some, uh, I give people one of my go-to trend following trading setups. And we talk a lot about risk management and then how to make it all work and, and put it all together. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this macro and bring it back to trading. Uh, we just mentioned earlier the CPI, we got uh, inflation, um, yeah. governments, potentially U.S. government changing definitions of recession, <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Yeah, we're all seeing <laughs> this happen. Times, huh? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to see what's going to happen with all of that. But we do know prices are going up everywhere. Things are more expensive. Uh, we have companies, you know, rising and falling. We see Rivian. We got Netflix. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm getting at is what do what should one or what would you suggest, not financial advice, but what would you suggest someone to look at, at trading in this type of climate and conditions? Uh, well, I think trading is, is a really important skill to have in this sort of an environment. But what we've seen in 2022 yep. is that there hasn't really been a safe place to hide. Stocks are down, obviously, you know, the Nasdaq's down Um, 25%. Bonds are down heavily. You know, gold, the old inflation hedge is down. Crypto's down. I mean, there hasn't been anywhere to hide other than cash. And and cash, when inflation is at 9%, isn't very interesting either. Mm -hmm. So when when you trade, when you learn to trade and you learn to trade options, you can make money from falling share prices as well as rising share prices. So I I think it's a, a really important skill. But people often say to me, you know, what is where do I put my money? And, and I think it comes from this very fixed mindset of, oh, I've, I've got to put my money in a long-term portfolio and because Wall Street's told me my whole life, you can't time the market, you can't beat the market. Uh, and I'm encouraging people to throw that fixed mindset away and adopt a growth mindset of, you know what, I can learn to identify high probability moments in time to expose my money to risk rather than be exposed to risk all of the time. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You definitely exposed to the risk all the time with a 401k. Like right? people yeah. are, are getting rocked right now with, you know, I couldn't imagine trying to retire and your, your portfolio's down 20%. Scary stuff, right? Scary. <laughs> it, it, it's wild. Uh, okay. Let's speak back to the uh, beginners, right? What would some advice you would give to someone that is new to trading options? Um, get yourself a proper education. All right. Nobody makes you get a license to open an options brokerage account. But if you if you open a brokerage account and start trading options without properly learning how to do so, it's a bit like throwing the keys to a, a paddle shift Ferrari to a 16-year-old who hasn't learned how to drive. He yeah. might, have, might have some great fun for a few minutes, but it's probably going to end badly. Yes. Um, and sadly, that's been the experience of a lot of people who started, you know, YOLOing options stonks only go up you know that, that was the <laughs> yeah. in 2020. Yeah. that was uh, lot, the whole language right there yeah, yeah a, a lot of those accounts have blown up now so um yeah i think i think a proper education is is really really important yes okay um can you break down some of your biggest wins and losses so that way the audience can get some understanding from that yeah sure i mean um so okay my biggest loss was in 2008 Mm. Uh, I, I lost a, a life-changing sum of money in the global financial crisis. I was working at Goldman at the time, and I was listening to you know the research analysts and the strategists, yep. and uh, buy the dip, buy the dip. This is the bottom. This stock looks undervalued. And I thought, well, you know, these are these are the masters of the universe, right? I, I should, you know, I, and I'd been drinking the Kool Aid, right? So I, I kept, uh, yeah. kept kept trying to buy the dip, pick the bottom, and uh, you know, came came out the end of that year having lost. Uh, you know, an embarrassing sum of money. And I thought, right, there's got to be a better way. And that was when I started talking to uh, friends of mine who, who were doing prop trading at Goldman. And this is, Goldman was, this is their heyday, right? Back, back yeah. in 2008, 2009. Yeah, they were popping. Yeah. And, um, you know, I said, you know, how have you guys made money? You know, oh, by doing this and shorting. And I said, well, what a, but the analysts are saying, buy. Oh, God, we, we don't listen to those guys. We follow the market. We follow price. We use technical analysis. And that's when I thought, right, okay, I'm, I'm just going like, to devote myself to learning how to do this stuff properly. 
Uh, and that's really what I did. Uh, and I was just fortunate that I had access to a Bloomberg screen. I could test and back test and figure stuff out. And, and that's what I was doing kind of every night at home, you know, working out how to, how to trade markets myself using technical analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> some of my biggest wins, I mean, probably yeah, my, my best trade was in 2020 where I made uh, 464% on, te- on some Tesla options in two days. Tesla options? That a, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a nice trade. Oh, wow. You, you know what? You're the second like person that has, you know, that does trading for a living and stuff that said Tesla. Like a lot of people must have got rich off of Tesla. <laughs> well, L- Love will hit the company. It's been a great trading stock. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure for sure, uh, for sure about, you know, the, the founders and all the stuff that you're doing, but it's definitely a good trade over there in Tesla. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you ride uh, Tesla up and down? Up and down, absolutely. Yeah, yep. makes sense. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's slowly start to uh, close out. Can you tell the audience what like products you would have your book? And I know you have some courses. Can you can you talk about those products that are educational that you know one could be interested in? Absolutely. So I, I've got a tower of trading dot com. That's t a o o f t r a i d i n g dot com. Yep. is uh, my online education business where people can learn everything they need to know uh, how to start generating an income stream, second income or, or grow their account. And it's it's really geared at people who have never traded before, don't even know what an option is. It mm. really is everything that you need to know to, to start trading the markets confidently. And you know, whilst it's not passive income, it's not just putting your money away and, and kind sure. of forgetting about it. Once you Once you're familiar with the systems and you've built the scans and I, I teach people how to do that um, you can get your trading done on average in about 20 minutes a day it's it's so it's very very time effective wow. and i've i've actually i've, I've built some um, i've got some resources available with, with a with about a 38 percent discount for your listeners see will if they head over to nice. www.towoftrading forward slash p-i-n Okay. So that's T-A-O-O-F-T-R-A-D-I-N-G dot com forward slash P-I-N. Uh, there's some resources there uh, that will get them started uh, with, with a 38% discount. Oh, excellent. I, I appreciate that. Can can we do uh, make sure that we, you email that to me so I can put all those links in the description for this video? We'll do. Absolutely. Be my pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So they know where to find you. Um, they know about some history of, you know, you're working and getting some understanding. Can we give, uh, some indicators before we go a couple indicators, one should maybe put on their list to study. Yeah. I, look, I think the, the markets are probably going to live and die by inflation. All right. The, the, the CPI figures, yep. um, Powell at the last FOMC press conference, he, he gave pretty clear indication that uh, forward guidance isn't going to be a big feature of what they're going to be doing. Um, and, I, and I think really and truly that you know, this, this data dependency means they're going to be relying a lot more on, on the CPI data that comes out. Uh, and I think so long as the CPI is is high, you know, sort of when I, when I, when I say high, well north of 4%, yep. you know, 2% has been the long-term target, I think we can expect uh, interest rates to keep heading up. You know, a, a lot of people have been expecting the Fed to cool off and, and you know, bail out the stock market as they have done every, every other time since Greenspan. But I, I think this time is different, Sue Will. Um, in, inflation is, is something that hurts everybody. Uh, and a recession, is, as nasty and as scary as it is, it, it, it probably hurts a smaller number of people than inflation. And so, if, you know, if, if, looking at the, the greater good argument, crushing inflation, I think, has got to be the, the top priority here. Okay, so inflation worse than recession? I mean, it does make sense. Um, yeah, you could just, again, see it in the prices. And people I talk to that it is just working, uh, raises and not keeping up. You know, everyone's getting crushed for the most part. So I definitely, that's what also drives me to, you know, study the markets better and get more sharper so that I can trade. Because I do know um, from what I, my understanding, this is a great market to trade in. It is. I mean, 2022 has been, it's been a great market. We've had lots of opportunities both on the upside and, and more so on the downside. Um, but yeah, just, just kind of sitting there watching your 401k get smaller by the day uh, is, is not much fun. So I always say to people, if you're going to start trading, start, start with a small amount of money, 
practice, get good at it. And, and once you've start, started to see the potential, then you can start you know, making your trading account bigger and bigger. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, thank you for tapping in and joining the show. Uh, you please uh, come back again. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm going to slide oh, out. Yep. And do the uh, outro and then I'll talk to you in a moment. Thanks, Sewell. Hey, y'all, uh, a very powerful and, import and informative episode with Simon Ray over there out of Singapore. He has a good background and uh, definitely a good educator. I'm going to go get that book because um, I'm always collecting books so that I can get educated myself. And as Simon said, look out for the link uh, discount to all the educational resources. And remember, on this channel, it's always about education first before you make a move. Educate yourself, educate yourself. So that's why we make these videos every week, every day to make sure that way we reciprocate information. Okay, y'all, see Will. Make sure that you guys share it with the friends and the fam and uh, we'll see Simon around. See Will with the Passive Income Network. I am gone. I replaced, had to have it, bank account, buy Algorand, large amounts.